the North Sea. This forms the connection between all the partners in the Tida project. Large, funnel-shaped river mouths with the tides reaching far inland. Salt water mixing with fresh water. These are called estuaries. The Tida project covers four large estuaries which have towns and harbors of worldwide importance. Plus, the fascinating nature. A world created from water and land in a continual state of change. All estuaries mark the borderline between the sea and the rivers. Salt and fresh water in the continual rhythm of the tides. It represents an unusual ecological system. Water continually on the move. This also means huge amounts of sediment which are moved into the estuaries and out again. All four estuaries involved in the Tita project represent shipping routes to large traditional harbors away from the coast. The central supply routes used by Europe to engage in world trade. They are central locations for road, rail and shipping on inland waterways. At the same time, all the estuaries in the Tita project are valuable areas for nature. They all belong to the strictly enforced Natura 2000 sites, key parts of European nature protection. <laughs> Hamburg, the largest German harbor facility, which lies in the heart of a metropolis with millions of inhabitants. It's situated on a river and is 110 kilometers from the coast. In spite of this, it still has had an enormous influence on shipping and international trade for over 600 years. Maritime flair, the River Elbe landscape, and no lack of things to see and do. Fact is, we have nun mal ein Natursystem, was von verschiedenen Anspruchsgruppen genutzt werden möchte und genutzt werden muss. Und die Kunst liegt eben daran, bei unseren Managementaktivitäten diese verschiedenen Belange auszutarieren. In Bremerhaven, the original world of nature along the River Weser has had little chance against the loading cranes. But it hasn't disappeared completely. The waterlogged meadows with their characteristic bird population have simply moved to the space reserved for harbour extensions. The so-called Lunaplatte, even the seldom seen blue-throat bird, fears at home here, a stone's throw away from the harbour facilities. We have here weitere uh, Gänsearten wie Blessgans, Graugans, viele Limikolenarten, Entenarten. Das ist also ein wirklich international bedeutendes Rastgebiet für Küstenvögel. The sea route to Antwerp in Belgium is located mainly in the Netherlands. This is a rather unique challenge because it implies cross-border management of the Scheldt estuary. For instance, when the shipping lane to the harbour needs to be dredged. Indeed, where dredging is needed and where the sediment lands up is decided by the river and not by the national borders. Intelligent sediment management with international cooperation is therefore a requirement. Wij krijgen één of één set vergunningen om te mogen terugstorten. En in die vergunningen zit een strategie. Vlaanderen vraagt een vergunning aan en Nederland geeft ze af. Dus wij moeten sowieso wel samenwerken om samen een, uh, overeen te komen hoe we gaan storten. Ja, want Vlaanderen werkt op Nederlands grondgebied. Hè? Dus Vlaanderen voert het uit en uh, zij baggeren eigenlijk. En uh, Nederland, uh, ja, wij controleren dat het gaat zoals we samen hebben afgesproken eigenlijk. Dat de werkverdeling een beetje. The attractive building on the Humber estuary is the Deep, 
an underwater aquarium in Hull. Here you can see what the murky estuary water hides, the wonderful world of underwater life living in the brackish tidal waters in the estuary. The Humber flows between embankments that force it to remain within the confines of the estuary bed. But the original wetlands have more or less disappeared. Sea level rise is causing a change between high and low tides. The presence of flood embankments prevents the intertidal area migrating landwards. This effect is known as coastal squeeze. Sometimes embankments are opened in certain places to give the estuary more room to flow. We've put a breach through the flood defence here to create both um, intertidal habitat to compensate for coastal squeeze, but also the Ockbra site operates as a flood storage area. So in really high tides, the whole site floods, so it reduces flood levels upstream by um, at least 10 centimetres on an extreme event. Four estuaries and similar challenges. They're all important entry points for world shipping, vital lifelines for the regional and national economies, and the latest prognosis for seas freight tonnage grow. Today, the freight quantities being handled by the estuaries associated with the Dida project are increasing at an enormous rate. If you took a football field and piled up the annual amounts of freight in containers, you would end up with a tower over 200 kilometers high. If someone mentions shipping routes, then one thinks of reliable, clearly marked routes. An estuary, by nature, is the exact yeah, opposite of a reliable, clearly marked route. It's a major challenge for pilots and nautical centers. They're constantly changing on a, sometimes on a weekly basis. So we have to have survey craft in this area constantly monitoring the changing sandbanks. The navigation channels require continual monitoring. Shipping in estuaries means navigation in the most dynamic natural system in the world. The human race has substantially changed the estuaries. The Shelt estuary 200 years ago. A lot of islands, main and subsidiary arms. Everywhere, fertile land is taken by the water and, at the same time, the current is changed to suit the demands of modern shipping. A natural landscape like this can hardly be put to good use in an economic way, but it does have a buffer function. It reduces the power of the water and limits the range between high and low tide. You can see how the system has changed the estuary in the Hamburg Speicherstadt. Low tide often reveals the old foundations of the buildings. The actual tidal range is 3.6 meters, and this is on the increase. These are changes that have an effect into the neighboring river branches. The tides move enormous amounts of sediment and dredges prevent sediment becoming a problem. Experts talk about tidal pumping, which is a special sediment accretion problem. Flood tide is always faster than ebb tide. The power of flood tides washes more sediment into the estuary than ebb tides can wash out again. It all produces a slow but continual amount of sediment deposits. This is why there can be no navigated waterways without dredging. There are more than 100 dredges working continually in Europe's estuaries to keep the routes open. All this work has its price. 200,000 euros per day in the Elbe estuary. And this includes an ordnance expert who's there to deal with World War II explosives brought up from the depths. A good example of the huge changes in our estuaries is the fact that the Elbe was around 4.5 meters deep in 1843. It had a number of main and minor routes. It was deep enough for small cargo boats. 
These days, the estuary is normally at least 30 meters deep. There's often only 50 centimeters between the ship's keel and the river bottom itself. Sediment caused by tidal pumping is unwanted. Projects like Crete Sant on the Elbe should help the situation. A new shallow water area should give the river more room for tidal fluctuations and limits the tidal pumping effect. We should understand more clearly how a complex system such as estuary functions, how things are changed by dredging, for instance, or by industrial plants and through changed tidal conditions. Research makes up an important part of the TIDA project. It's here that scientists can gain useful data for planning that provides the basis for successful management in estuaries. Dredging is always interfering in the complex system of an estuary. How are the waters changed through dredging? Intelligent management means, for instance, that sediment is not waste material that is removed, but rather material suitable for the creation of more living space. The large trading towns and cities situated far inland on the estuaries and not on the sparsely populated areas on the coast did not happen by chance. It was intentional. The goods could be unloaded directly in the densely populated inland areas. Internationally important cultural and economic metropolises in which millions of people live. They too have to be protected from high water, just like industrial plant and cities. It often only becomes apparent the scale of threat from the tidal flooding facing people within estuary regions when flooding happens. The storm floods in 1953 on the Humber and Scheldt estuaries and in 1962 on the River Elbe. Ständig den drohenden Tod vor Augen hatten sie bis zu 10 Stunden in den Dach geschossen, auf den Dächern oder auch auf den Bäumen ausgehalten. Following these catastrophes, a good deal of money was invested in better embankments. In spite of this, protection against high water is still a major job facing the estuary regions. This is a technical solution on the River Hull in Hull. A huge floodgate is lowered when high water threatens in order to protect hundreds of thousands of people and an important economic region. It's a project with a view to the future because climate change and stronger tides increase the danger posed by high water. This too is active protection against the risks of high water, the Lippenbrook project on the River Scheldt. It seems like a natural idyll at first glance, but it's actually a combination of natural protection and storm flood problem. In normal flood tide conditions, the water flows into the areas surrounded by embankments. It creates the normal wet meadows on the estuary banks. This ecologically valuable nature area can cope with a storm flood with ease. The polder fills up with water within a short time. Once again, the water has enough room. Lippenbrook is a pilot project where scientists wanted to find out how an efficient storm polder should be constructed so that flood protection and protecting nature could function in an optimal way. That is why scientists measure sediment movement and water quality. Hopefully. <laughs> Research work like this is interesting for all TIDA partners. These challenges are similar in all estuaries within the TIDA project. How can flood protection and the world of nature be improved while offering more protection to the sea routes for modern shipping? which project ideas have proven their worth. How can I bring decision makers and interest groups to sit down at the same table to work out future-oriented concepts for the development of estuaries? One thing has been revealed, and that is that flood protection doesn't necessarily mean less nature. Everywhere where space has been created to cope with high water excesses, the world of nature has profited. 
flood storage areas do not exactly recreate the habitats that have been lost, but they are excellent replacement areas for rare and typical animal and plant life in the estuaries. It's simply more effective when the research results gained by European partners can be utilized as well. Tourism is another example from which TIDA partners can benefit from the experience gathered by European neighbors. The beach for having fun, clean water, and international container shipping. It's hard to imagine bigger differences, but it all works together when it's carried out properly. Future-oriented concepts can only be realized when they're all willing to take others seriously, to learn from one another, and to produce workable compromises. The TIDA project stands for joint effort for the future of the European estuaries. That's the Environment Agency's key role to make sure that the area is properly prote protected. Via this project um, we're very very pleased uh, to be involved to learn from uh, other estuary teams working in comparable situations. Uh, we can learn from each other build our understanding and skills and apply that thinking to the work that we do. So we're very keen to be partners uh, in, the, in the TIDA project. Der Erfahrungsaustausch mit diesen Partnern im TIDA-Projekt läuft ausgezeichnet und jeder profitiert enorm davon. Musik